How to manage risk effectively is something that probably comes up in your mind constantly. And today I'm going to dive into this topic and give you some tips on how to manage your risk because it is extremely important to your success as a day trader. Welcome back, guys. My name is Kenya with BK Trading Academy, where we help new and struggling traders learn how to trade with structure and guidance so that you guys start the right way, have a breakthrough and trade confidently. So let's go ahead and hop right in. I'm going to give you a few tips. And before we do that, I need you to do me a favor throughout this video, smash the like button so that this can get pushed out to so many traders who need help because I truly believe that risk management is the number one downfall of day traders in any market. So let's hop right in. Yeah, I know I got problems and I don't know where to go. I don't want to put the blame on you. So the first thing we need to get clear is what is risk management? And in simple terms, it's about controlling your risk exposure to potential losses while maximizing your chances for profitability. So here's some essential tips to help you do that. Tip number one, when you are creating your risk management plan, you really need to ask yourself, what is your overall risk appetite? So what are you comfortable risking based on your total account size? And before you even get to that, it's really important that you make sure that you're properly capitalize in the market that you trade. So for example, in the currency market, I always recommend that traders start out with at least $5,000 when you know what you're doing. Of course, the more you have, the better, especially if you're looking to be a full-time trader, you definitely want to have much more capital than that. But I'd say minimum 5,000, the least I would say $2,000. When you really understand what you're doing, you have a risk management plan. I would say $5,000 is a decent amount where you feel like you're getting something worth your while for everything that you put in. If you are using an account like $500 or anything less than $500, let's say a $200 account, those type of accounts are really to test your emotions inside of a live account or to make sure that you understand how to place a trade or you want to test your system out. It's not really for making income, in my opinion, or consistent profitable income because it is such a small amount and there are so many market conditions where you need flexibility and you need proper capital to really help you weather those storms when they do happen. So before you place a trade, your number one priority, make sure you're properly capitalized and then make sure that you know what your risk appetite is and how you do that. You take the amount of your total account and you determine a percentage or a dollar amount that you are comfortable with losing in case trades don't go your way. So for example, if I were going to trade with a $10,000 account and I don't want to risk more than 2% of my $10,000 account at any time when I'm trading, that means that I don't want to lose more than $200 at any moment when I'm trading. So that means if I have 10 trades that are open spread across multiple currency pairs, I'm not going to have more than $200 in drawdown. Once I do, I need to start closing trades. So remember, that is your number one focus is determining your overall risk appetite before you ever open up a trade. Number two, you need to determine your method of stop loss. A stop loss order is just a powerful risk management tool that helps limit your potential losses on a trade. Now you want to set a stop loss based on your overall risk tolerance. And then you want to stick to that religiously. It's really easy to set a stop loss when you have a consistent trading system that you use. For example, a lot of our students trade the KISS strategy, which stands for Kenya's Instant Scalping Strategy. It's an intraday and scalping method. It has very specific risk rules around it. A lot of our students also use our price action channel strategy. So there's very specific rules as to how we manage the stop loss. There's no question about it. Regardless of your style of trading, you know or would know that your stop loss goes out side of the channel and under or above the 50 period moving average, giving the trade enough room to breathe, but also knowing how to strategically apply your position sizing so that you come out on top regardless of what the market does. So you may not know specifically what I'm referring to right now when I'm talking about a particular system, but this is why it's so important because if you have a rules-based strategy or system and you've tested it enough to know your strengths and weaknesses, you're not going to feel uncomfortable when you're placing your stop. You're going to have complete confidence in your stop loss. And you're also going to know when it's best to cut a small loss because that trade is no longer working out. So whether you use hard stop losses or a mental stop loss, okay, I don't recommend mental stop losses, which means you don't actually put the stop loss in your trading platform unless you are properly capitalized. You have a large account and you're using small position sizes where even if the worst were to happen, you're not going to damage yourself. So I'm not against a particular stop method. I think that every trader should do what works best for 
through them. So regardless of what you hear in the industry, make sure you always test out what's best for you. Tip number three is to make sure you diversify your trade. You want to avoid putting all of your trades into one basket and diversifying them amongst various currency pairs or markets based on how you trade. And let me show you a quick example of that. So you'll see that I'm on the daily of GBP USD and currently this pair is in a downtrend. However, it's at a really strong weekly level where price could potentially turn. If I just spread this zone across here, you'll see that this is a zone that has been tested multiple times. Also, you can see we have an impulse to the downside where price was previously sideways and then broke out of this sideways consolidation. So now that we know that the trend is downward and we're willing to buy and take that risk to go against the trend to trade the correction, let's say if this pair typically moves slow, but maybe there's another opportunity where we could find a more volatile pair. So that way, when we're in GBP USD and let's say we have maybe eight positions on this pair, we're not putting all of our eggs into one basket. So let's say maybe we go and trade a pair like Euro AUD. So you can see Euro AUD has moved in the last two days from this support to the resistance. This pair has moved 134 pips. However, if we compare that to the last two days of GBP USD, this pair has only moved 74 pips. Spread, we could diversify between these two currency pairs knowing that we have one that's a more volatile pair and maybe we still have one that we really like to trade, but we know that it can be slow sometimes until it finally does start moving. So that's exactly what I mean by diversification. You don't want to put all of your eggs into one basket. So the next tip is calculating your position sizes. Now, this tip is really, really important because this is where a lot of traders are missing the mark. And that is properly sizing your positions and never risking more than a small percentage of your total account. So what you're going to do is I recommend going to Google, just search for a position size calculator. And when you search a position size calculator, you're going to put in all of your information. So for example, you're going to put your total account balance, let's say it's five or 10,000, 20,000, whatever you want it to be. You're then going to put the currency pair that you're trading. You're going to put your total stop loss amount. So let's say if you want to use like a 50 pip stop loss because you're intraday trading, you will put 50 pips. It may ask you to share the lot size that you're trading. So if you're doing 10 cents a pip, you will stick with 10 cents a pip, a dollar, whatever you want. And then you calculate that. So usually when you calculate your risk, a position size calculator is going to give you two important pieces of information. It's going to give you your daily max risk, and it's also going to give you a recommended position size. So for example, let's say your daily max risk is $500 and your daily max lot size is $7. This is just hypothetical. So what you're going to do is when you are placing trades, you are never going to exceed that daily max risk amount. And then also you are never going to see your daily max lot size amount. So if your daily max lot size is $7, you're not going to go and place five trades at $3 each. That would exceed your total lot size available. You only have $7 to trade. So if you were to place five trades times $3, that's $15. So you're already exceeding the total risk amount for your account. What I always like to advise traders to do is to lower your lot size and spread out your stop loss, especially for scalping, because there's not a lot of room for buffer and you're going to make mistakes. So this is extremely important. Tip number five is to keep a trading journal. I've met a lot of traders who said they have never journaled or they have journaled for maybe a short period of time and they never return to it again. If you're watching this video and you don't keep a detailed, consistent journal, I think you found this video for a reason if you are still failing in trading. Risk management is one of the number one downfalls for a lot of traders and there are a lot of traders who don't take journaling seriously and I know that it's a mundane task. It's not a glorious task to do but it is necessary to your success and you must do it. Keeping your journal is going to help you track your performance, analyze your trades, and identify your strengths and weaknesses. It's going to point out where you need to make those changes when it comes to how you're managing your risk. If you are a student of ours, I can look at your trading journal and tell if you're risking too much, if you're comfortable with your risk management approach, if you're succeeding with it, if you're not strong in it yet. I can tell all those different things. And that's why a journal is so valuable to your success. And I recommend that you definitely do start one and keep one. And that will help you know know where you need to make adjustments with your risk management. And that's it, guys. Remember that no risk management strategy is foolproof and losses are going to be inevitable when you're trading. You got to get really good at being a sore loser in investment day trading because you're going to lose trades and that's just completely okay. But what you want to get to is a place where your profits far outweigh the losses that you take. And by implementing these tips that I've shared and staying disciplined, you can minimize your losses and maximize your chances of long-term success. So I hope you found these tips helpful. 
helpful. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads in the future. Also check out the description of this video if you're a new or struggling trader and you are desiring hands-on mentorship that will take you to the next level to help you be a consistently profitable trader. Study our leadership and how we trade. Look at all of the testimonials and what our students say, and then come and join us when you're ready. You guys stay blessed and I will see you in the next training video. Take care. Yeah, I know I got problems And I don't know where to go I don't wanna put the blame on you